Welcome back to the Lexi's Leukemia channel. Today I'm baking a cake for my Aunt Christy. So my sister-in-law Christy, or Lexi's aunt's birthday, is coming up and we are celebrating at my father-in-law's house with just a little gathering of some food from a local restaurant that she enjoys and then a cake. Normally we would just order that cake from a bakery, but with it being short notice and this just kind of got thrown at me, I'm like, you know what? We don't have time to get the kind of cake she wants, so we are going to make it ourselves. A lot of people who watch the channel may not know this about me, but the big box retailer that I work for in years past, uh, I was the manager over the bakery and deli, and so I do know how to decorate cakes. Um, I can do borders and flowers and all the things you need to decorate a basic cake at Walmart. So that is what we are going to do. We are going to do a chocolate cake with buttercream frosting because that's what she enjoys um, is a chocolate cake with white buttercream frosting and then I am going to dye some of the frosting so that I can pipe on roses and leaves and vines. Um, I want to show you all the things. It's really fun. It's something I enjoy doing on the side. Um, I have made a few of Lexi's birthday cakes. One year I made an Elmo. I'll see if I can find a picture. I don't know. I think I have a picture somewhere I can insert it. Um, but I made her an Elmo cake using a Wilton Elmo pan. And so, you know, when I have the time, um, I try to make things look cute. So we are going to get started. We are totally phoning it in today. Um, I do have recipes for homemade vanillas and chocolate cakes and frostings and whatnot. It's really easy to make frosting, butter, a little bit of milk or water, and powdered sugar. But I am phoning it in today because we don't have a lot of time because I have to work later. So the first thing we're going to do is um, we are going to grease our pans. I wanted to make a round cake because that's what she wanted. So we're just going to do an 8 inch round. And I have taken some parchment paper and cut out circles approximately the size of the bottom of our pan. These are just disposable ones because I lost my good ones in the move somewhere. Or maybe they're still in the moving box. I don't know. So basically what I'm going to do is just take regular cooking spray and you spray the bottom of the pan. Um, you also do need to spray the size of the pan since we're using a round pan. If it were a 13 by 9, you would just spray the bottom. And then you spray that, so that kind of glues your parchment paper down, see? And then you can still spray the top of your parchment paper as well. It just makes for a more even layer when you go to peel that off. Like if you work in a bakery, like they come in like that and then you just peel that layer off and it's so much easier. So I've just been doing this ever since I learned that little trick working at the bakery. And then you just use that to glue down your parchment and then spray it one more time. And then we have our little pans ready to go. All right, are you ready to help me, Lexi? Yes. Lexi is so excited to help. All right, so this is just a box cake mix. So any box cake mix will do. So we are just going to go ahead and follow the directions on our box cake mix, which is preheat to 350 degrees, one and a fourth cups of water, check, check. half a cup of vegetable oil, check, check. and three eggs, check. check. So we're gonna throw in a little montage of Lexi helping me get all this done. She is so excited. All right, so. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to open this and you're going to dump this into this bowl here, okay? You have to dump this cake mix. All of it? Yup. So we're going to turn it upside down and you're going to dump it in there, okay? Dump it in here. Yup. Good job. That's all right. Perfect. And then the nice thing about box cake mix is you can just throw all your trash in a box and then throw it away. 
All right, so now we have to follow the directions. Do you remember what the directions are? So. What are directions? It's how to bake. Yeah, it tells you what to do. So I've already preheated the oven to 350 okay. degrees. So then it says mix cake mix, mm -hmm. water, and oil, and eggs in a large bowl with a mixer on medium speed. Okay. Beat vigorously by hand two minutes and pour in the pan. So we're just gonna big mix it by hand. We don't need to use a mixer for a box cake mix. Mm -hmm. And make a big mess, right? So, mm -hmm. all right, let's get our stuff measured out here. So it says we need half a cup of vegetable oil. So do you remember how to read a measuring cup? So cups are on this side. So we need a half a cup. Which one shows half a cup? This one. Very good, half a cup. And cooking is a great way to reinforce math skills. They just started learning how to measure things in inches, right, with a ruler. Mm -hmm. So anytime she cooks with me, I have her like look at the numbers and the measuring spoons and whatever because it is a great way to reinforce math because you do use math in the real world, don't you? So you're going to help me pour this. Okay. We're going to pour it until we get to the half a cup line. Do you see where the half a cup line uh -huh, is? Right there. So you got to tell me when to stop, okay? Alright, very good. So we got half a cup. So now we are going to pour this water into this bowl, okay? So go ahead and pour the water in there carefully. Very good. It looks like And then you're gonna pour the oil into the bowl. Yeah. <laughs> It'll do that if some water gets under there. You're going to pour the oil into the bowl. Yep. Now you're going to crack the eggs one at a time into this. And then you are going to pour the egg. Into that? Uh-huh. Okay. Alright, I'll dig out the shell. No, my, my hands are sticky. That's alright, we gotta just do the other one still. Mm -hmm. I dug out the one fat piece of shell. You only got one fat piece of shell this time. That was great. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what are you gonna do? Now You're gonna I stuff get... that in the box. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Your hands are so sticky. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now you crack the other edge. So we're gonna chop this up. Chop, chop, chop. I wanna. Chop, 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 chop. Okay. Now. Stuff it in there. Pour. Okay. Now crack your next egg. Let's try not to get anything. Go ahead. Well, no, keep going. your aprons for. Mm -hmm. Good job. Let me see if there was any shell. Sticky. Yeah, yeah. Sticky, sticky. Oh, someone moves. One piece of shell, but we got it. <laughs> That's a safe one for. Good job, 
No shell this time. No shell. Good job. So we have the cake all mixed up. It says about two hundred though, because I don't count. Once all the uh, powder is, you know, dissolved, like all the mix itself, and you've got the eggs really incorporated and stuff, that's all I ever do. And I don't feel like busting out my mixer just for that. If it were one of my homemade from scratch cakes, I would totally bust out the mixer because you got to clean butter and do all this other stuff, but not for this. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to evenly distribute this cake batter between both pans here. So I'm going to just pour a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then you jump over to the other one and count the same amount. It's a little trick I learned to keep them even. Hopefully you've gotten the pans pretty even at that point. So I'm going to just tap these on the bottom to get out any air bubbles, especially since I'm using disposable pans that are a little thinner. And if you see a spare clump of powder that you missed, just kind of take your clean finger or a spoon or something and just do that. Since we're making this for family, we're not doing gloves in the whole nine. If I were in the bakery, yes, you would have to be extra careful. And then just follow your package directions. And for two eight inch rounds for us, it's 30 to 35 minutes until a toothpick comes out clean. So we're gonna get these in the oven and then we'll come back once they're cooled and show you how I decorate. The cakes are out of the oven and they have cooled. And I wanted to show you what they look like so I have cut the top off of this to make it a little more even um, if you have a serrated knife that works well or just any long thin knife like this and you can just kind of level out the top um, because it's got a little bit of a dome on it and you don't have to do that if you want your cake to look a little more rustic you would just put the domed part on the top but for me, I like them a little more flat because I'm going to put icing in between. So um, I'm going to move the camera down now and show you exactly what I'm doing. So this is where I kept all the scraps from what I cut off. <clears throat> and this is <clears throat> my cake board. Um, this is a, like a 10 inch cake board that you can get from Walmart that's already got the gold on the top. So it's all nice and fancy looking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to squeeze a little dollop of icing right into the center. And that is what is going to hold on your cake to the board. And I'm just using regular old Betty Crocker creamy frosting so I didn't make my own this time. And then you're just gonna take a little long thin, this is like Wilton's um, little I don't even know what you call these spatula and just spread that out a little bit and then that is what is going to be holding your cake on 
So then you are going to peel off and see it comes right off. I told you it would. And then we are going to set this flat side down, the part you did not cut off down, and try to get it in the center. Now, the cake pans that I have that were the disposable ones have these little ridges on the side. If you can just do plain, that's easier. It won't eat up as much of your frosting. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piping bag. Now this is a 16 inch piping bag from Wilton with the 6B tip on it. Um, just, that's the fattest tip I have. Uh, if you just got a plain tip that doesn't scallop, that's perfect. Just a big fat round tip that lets your icing come out. Um, <clears throat> and so you are just going to pipe not all the way to the edge because when you put it on some of the icing will squeeze out and plus you are going to um put the cake on top of this and then ice the sides so we're going to do it just like that and then if you want you can take your spatula again and just kind of smooth it around so you get an even coating. Now if you were doing fondant, they call this the crumb coat. You put the icing in between and then you cover everything in a thin layer. And of course these cakes have been cooling for like an hour. There's no way you can do this other than that. Trying to ice a hot cake just isn't going to happen. And if you get any holes, you just do that. Now I am going to take the other cake and put it on top and you're just going to peel this off again and then again the side that you cut that may not be super even is what's going to go against your other side and since I have scalloped edges I need to try to match up the scallop and then you press it down a little bit and as you can see some of the icing will squeeze out the sides and that's fine you want that to be filled up so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and we're gonna do icing all around the top and sides of this and then I have got this handy dandy this is a bench scraper but Wilton makes plastic ones that are easier I've just never invested in those but you're gonna take this and you're literally gonna scrape down the top and, top, top and sides of your cake to make it smooth. So that's what you're gonna see next. Um, what I basically did was take some gel food colorings, just the kind that you can get at um, any big box retailer, and I find that gel consistency works better than these little drops um, because the gel is thick enough that it will not thin out your icing consistency, which is what you don't want. So I have since switched to different Wilton bags now. These are the 12 inch bags. The bigger bags I use for bigger projects or like if I'm doing the tops of cupcakes and I need to use a bigger tip. But these smaller bags, I do not do that. And I don't know if you can see it, but on the 12 inch bags, it actually gives you a max fill line. You don't want it to um, go out the edge or up the top you know so what I have done is colored my icing I've got purple um, yellow pink 
and then just a tiny bit of green to do um, stems and leaves. So basically, I have taken a star tip from Wilton. This is number 18. Um, and this is what I'm going to use to pipe my border. Now, you can also use just a plain round one if you don't want the scalloped. But I want it to look nice, so it's going to be scalloped. So a little bit of crumb got onto the top of my cake as I was icing it because it's just so moist, the box cake. And I just don't have time to put it in the fridge and let it really set and then ice it and then let it set some more like you normally would so i'm just base icing and hurrying up because i got given this literally yesterday like hey by the way we need a cake so i'm just doing it really quickly and i didn't want her to not have the cake that she wanted because we could not find that cake at the bakery so i can make it it's okay so i'm sure she'll be happy with whatever we come up with so basically you're going to try to like massage this and squeeze out all the air bubbles and then you're going to take the top and twist it and I'm going to do the bottom first and it's kind of like you apply a bead of pressure and then let off and then you apply a bead of pressure and then let off and that's how you get kind of those scalloped borders that you see. So a big bead of pressure and then drag and let off a big bead of pressure and then drag and let off. I don't know. <laughs> how else to explain it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start. So bead of pressure, drag. Now normally at the bakery, I would have a little turntable. However, I am not fancy here. I do not have one of those. I just turn it. every so often with my hands and the way I have this bag set up is you can get the I have the tip kit from Wilton I think this is the one that has the 20 tips in it it's not like the super fancy one but it's what I um, enough for me it's got all the things you need to use and it comes with one coupler and then it comes with um, this little screw on cap So I've gotten the bottom all done. Let me see if I can show you what it looks like. This is what the scalp border looks like. Um, I'm noticing that my icing's a little soft. I ran the dishwasher earlier. It's a little warm in the kitchen. So I'm actually gonna pop my other colors in the freezer because you really don't want soft icing when you're making roses. You need it kind of stiff. So I'm going to pop that in the freezer and then uh, do the border on the top. So this is the writing. It's going to say, happy birthday, Christy. That's the name of my sister-in-law. Definitely practice your cursive and your regular writing. If you are not a good writer in real life on paper, then you're not gonna transfer very well to the icing bag. So I always tell people, if you wanna learn how to write on cakes, find a good script style that you like when you are writing and then you can transfer that over the cakes. The one thing to remember to make it look nicer 
is always make your first letter way bigger than the others, like more than you would in normal writing, especially when you're capitalizing, because it just makes it look better. If they're all the same height on a cake, it just doesn't stand out very well and just doesn't look very good. So like I did the H kind of big with embellishments, you do the B kind of big with embellishments and the C, and then the Y at the end, I kind of dragged it up and did a little embellishment where normally I wouldn't. So that's the time where you add your embellishments and then you save all your dots and everything else and T's for last. So it's just like you're writing cursive, just one long flowy thing. And then you add in your dots for your I's, crosses for your T's or anything last. But make sure you make the first letter super big. That's what will help your lettering look nice and stand out. So now I'm going to make up some bags for the red and the yellow. Well, it's more of a pink pink and yellow and then for the green for the flowers. Okay, so I've got my piping bag made with my rose tip. So Wilton has these nice little, I don't even know what you call these, they look like large thumbtacks. They have a point on the end so you could stick it into a foam piece, um, but it's flat on the top here so that's where you're gonna put your rose. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your rose tip and you're just gonna do it perpendicular and you're just gonna beat up a nice big round thing of icing, like a cylinder of icing. And that is where you're gonna put your rose, is on top of that, just like that. So then scrape off any excess on the side there. Now, you want the fat part of your tip down to make a rose. And in the center, you're gonna make as small as you can a little hollow cylinder. That is going to be the center of your rose, just like that. So then you're just going to start dragging try to get all your excess icing off and just go around and keep making little strokes and that is what makes your rose. Now this is my first one. I haven't made roses in a while, so. Your first one's always the worst, obviously. And then you get better. And you just go down and you make it as far as you want or as big as you want, as wide as you want. And I think that's good for mine. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use regular scissors. Wilton makes these little plastic scissors that are like down a little bit, but I never invested in those. So I just do it this way. You need to just take the scissors and just lift up and like kind of slice off your rose, see? And then you can take your clean spatula here and you're just gonna kind of like slide the rose off where you want it, so. And then if anything gets on the sides, don't worry about that because you are going to pipe some leaves and vines and everything else. So you really don't need to worry about that at all. So it's 
time to make my final bag. I've got all my roses piped on. Um, and now I am going to use a, a little small tip to draw the vine. And then I'm going to use this tip that's sliced on the end because that's how you make um, the leaves. And this is number 352. For the small vines, I'm going to use Wilton tip number two. So basically, I love piping on the vines and the leaves because they will hide any imperfections you had. If you struggled trying to get the roses off of your thing and onto the cake, then you can just where it's a little gloppier on the edges of the rose. That's meant to hide the underneath side of your rose. It doesn't look so good because it's the top side of the rose that people are going to see. So like right here, uh, let me see if I can show you where I glopped a little icing by the P right there. I'm gonna try to cover that up with green leaves. So, you do what you gotta do and nobody knows the difference when it's all said and done. Now, if my sister-in-law watches this video, she will know, but for the most part, people would not know. <laughs> So for this vine tip, you literally just hold it this way and then you pipe the icing out like that and it kind of makes that little leaf point for you. And then if you, and so this, the way I just held it, made the leaves sideways and then if you hold it flat you can do them front ways So I've got the green and the vines all done and now I am going to use my rose tip again to just make some little rose buds on the vine. You literally just do like a little V motion and that is what makes your little rose buds. So I'm going to do one to practice and that's all you have to do. And add some leaves down here at the bottom as a finishing touch. And Christie's cake is all done. Let's see if I can carefully hold it up for you all to see. And there we go. See if I can take a better video of it. So this is what it looks like. Very amateurish. Lots of green uh, leaves. My icing is just really soft. And I don't have the full range of tips. So this is what I got. But honestly, all in all, not too bad.